Hi there, long time no speak. I thought it was about time to share one of my videos again and this one is a hanger swell. For this I used an assessed recipe. I'm using two sets of mica here from Mica MoMA which I have um, in that assessed recipe combined with some titanium dioxide and with this I'm going to attempt a different kind of swell to what I've done previously. I keep getting asked about the um, containers I'm using. It's these ones here, which I bought like two, three years ago. I cannot find them online anymore, so I don't think they do them. And I'm also using a hanger here. I've made this myself with some straws and obviously an actual coat hanger. Um, so these are my tools for this technique, the butterfly technique. In order to complete this technique, I did a bit of research, read up online, found some YouTube channels, um, same as you're doing here right now, I guess. And I came across the one from Holly, which is Kapia Mira on YouTube. I hope I pronounced that correctly. So yeah, she has some amazing um, tutorials on her YouTube channel. So definitely have a look at that. And what I'm drawing here is what I have taken from one of her videos. This is how I understood that the uh, technique needs to go. So basically going down in the center, just below the surface then going along the side in four loops that i think just getting bigger slightly then go down all the way to the bottom and then diagonally across to the other side of the bottom and out again um i hope i understood that correctly um but this really is what i was aiming for um which in theory would all be fine but the hard thing obviously here is that you can't see what you're doing once you're actually inside the soap this is why I had another couple of dry runs before I actually went and um, added this soap to my mold. So you can see here, I'm literally going for one, two, three, four. And after this, I'm going along the side, going all the way down, back up and diagonally across. And so, yeah, I did this a few times to practice before I was happy to actually doing it with the actual soap. Here are my melted down oils and butters and my lye. They're roughly the same temperature, around 85 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. I only use plant-based um, oils. I simply, personally, I'm not a massive fan of using the animal products. I know they can create really lovely soap, but personally, I just, I'm not a massive fan, so I just leave those out. Um, I'm using a fragrance oil called Freesia here, and it's a really lovely fragrance. I think it'll go really nicely with a butterfly design and obviously the pink and purpley white colours. Um, but I do know that that fragrance oil does accelerate trace slightly. So I want to get to a very light trace here. Now, you might wonder, why am I using this if I know it accelerates trace when I don't want that? Um, but like I said, it's an assessed recipe, so I can sell um, the soaps or give them away once they're fully cured, which I wouldn't be able to do if um, I used an, an unassessed recipe. Um, so I'm not going to show you this entire process here. It's going to get a little bit boring. But here you can see I'm just checking whether my oils are breaking apart, which are still slightly. So I'm just mixing a tiny little bit longer um, before I move on to the next step. Now, trace is for me perfect here right now. Let's remember, I'm not going to pour it into my mold the way it is right now because it would be too runny and it would just muddle up all the colors. But I still need to add the fragrance oil. I still need to add all my colors. So for this step right now, this trace is perfect. I'm just repeating that process twice more. So I've got one container for the pink, one container for the purple, and one for the titanium dioxide main part. So two of them are going to be filled slightly less and then the final one is going to be filled all the way up to the top. Here are my three containers now. You can see the two at the front are filled just slightly. That's because I want to put the colors in there, the pink and the purple. Whereas the one at the back that's slightly hidden is for the titanium dioxide. This is the Mycomoma Hot Pink. It works really nicely in soap. It gives a really lovely, strong color. You may have just noticed I didn't completely empty that container. That's because I want to use some of that color on the top of the soap at the very end for decorations. Then here is the blackberry again from my Camoma, which also does create really lovely dark purpley color. And I'm leaving some aside for decoration at the end. Now, the reason why I'm starting with the micas instead of the titanium 
dioxide is that the titanium dioxide does accelerate trays a little bit so i wanted to keep that to the very end um, well do the other two first rather than this because if i'd done this one first this would get a little thicker already which then if you're hoping for same consistencies amongst the different color portions wouldn't be very helpful if this particular part thickens up already Here they all are, finished, ready to go. I'm quite happy with the three colours. The titanium dioxide has lightened the soap. It's not a complete white, but I'm happy. This is a really light, kind of beigey colour. There's the dark purple and the pink. Now, they're still not thick enough in terms of trace to use for this particular technique for me. Um, but this is the point to add the fragrance oil, where I said this particular fragrance oil does accelerate trace slightly. I still had to wait a little while, but you know, you'd rather start with a thinner trace and wait a little bit than um, overdoing the blending, the mixing, and then you end up with a trace that's far too thick to do anything with. And yes, of course, I sped the video up here. Um, my hands are not quite as quick as this, um, but I just thought you all know how to mix and stir. You do not need to see this in slow motion here. Uh, you do want to make sure, though, that your fragrance oil is mixed in really, really well. So do really go for that mixing nicely. Anyway, let's move on to the actual exciting part. Um, you can see I'm just giving this another dry run through just to make sure because this particular technique I have not used before. So I just wanted to make sure I'm not messing this up because obviously once you've started, that's it. <laughs> You're committed. Um, so I'm happy. Well, I say I'm happy. I'm actually, I was feeling quite nervous at that point. But let's go. I wanted to um, have a, a layer of the creamy white color at the bottom first. Just double checking again. You can see this is thicker now and it's just right. The purple and pink are slightly, just ever so slightly thinner in terms of trace. More the purple than the pink. Uh, but I felt this was all okay the way it was now. So as I said, at the bottom of the mold, I wanted to have a layer of white first. I didn't want the colors, the pink and the purple, going all the way to the bottom. You will see in the very end um, soap, or you probably have seen from the front picture already, that it did extend to the end, but I just wanted to make sure that there's no actual, from the start, no color right at the bottom. So here we go, we have got some white at the bottom, and now I'm just trying to um, work my logistics how I'm doing this. Um, I am pouring just along the, whichever way you look at it, I would say the left hand side, but looking at the screen at the bottom and just try to alternate the colors. I really wanted to make sure that the purple and the pink do not run all the way over to the other side of the mold. So whenever I poured the light color, I made sure I always poured a little bit on the top end. I'm not very good at expressing myself here tonight, but hopefully you can see. So here I'm doing all along the bottom and then um, in this case I was fine, but some of the layers you will see, I then added some to the top of the mold of the white just to kind of push the color back in like I'm doing right here. Just pushing that color back over to the side where it's supposed to be. And then just kept continuing this, just kept going layer by layer, a little bit of pink, a little bit of purple, almost like tiny drop swirls, except you want to make sure it's not going from all the way up because that was not, I mean, I guess it could have been a nice design, but I didn't, I wanted them to layer. I didn't want them to drop into one another. I'll speed this up here again a little bit, just so you can see how the layering progresses without sitting through this for too long. Nothing really is happening here for now until I add the hanger in a minute. Now, as you can see, this is about five times its actual speed, and you can probably tell that the trace is starting to thicken up here. I mean, it's quite obvious. Um, it didn't worry me too much, though, at this point, because it was still fluid enough. Um, but of course, these are the kind of things you really need to consider when planning a design. It's crucial that you know your fragrance oil and how it behaves so that you don't end up with a ruined design. So here's my lovely hanger swirl tool. Um, it is a coat hanger um, and I have got some kit straws that I poured over this just to make it thicker because if your hanger swirl tool is too thin, so just the width of the actual hanger, it may just not be enough to drag the different colours into one another and create that design. Now, 
Um, this part here is just me going down, doing that very last all the way across movement to then drag it out along the side. Now, usually I may scrape the remaining soap on top, but I didn't want the random colors added on to the top. So whatever I had left over, I put it into a little mold on the side and create a little hand soap for ourselves here. Just another little tap down here, and then it's time to decorate the top. I will be putting lots of dots on here. So if that's something you'd rather avoid seeing, please do skip ahead. Um, if you remember from the beginning, I had some mica, these little containers left over with the oil. And this is what I'm using here, just um, spreading out the dots that I will then um, drag around with a little toothpick. Um, just a word of warning here, if you haven't used those toothpicks in your soap and you've got a lovely design, make sure you use these toothpicks right at the top. Do not dig them in too much or you will actually ruin your design, which would be such a shame. Now, at this point, whilst you're watching this, just to remind you, I am going to upload a separate video with a different take and a, I would like to say, quite a different outcome um, to this butterfly technique. The way I was swirling it, I came up with a different way. Um, not saying it's massively imaginative or a completely new way. But um, as much as I love this outcome and the design, I really do. I really think it's really beautiful butterfly designs. I wanted to try something different to make the wings look slightly different. So my other video will go through this step by step and explain that in um, hopefully in a couple of days time. So here, this is the toothpicks, just dragging them around randomly. I want to create little designs and it's so hard to stop at the right time. You don't want to overdo it. You can't undo um, whatever you've done and then trying to rescue it. Sometimes you just make it worse. <laughs> so, um, But here I found mm, just a few more dots. So I poured a little bit more on and again, just decorated this a little bit more. Two days later and it was finally moment of truth. You can see that the soap, the colours has stayed on one side mainly, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, I did leave it for two days just because the soap felt a little bit too soft after the first day. So this felt a safer option. And a cut like this for me is always extra exciting. Now there are certain soaps that I do over and over again and I know exactly what they're going to look like in the end. But here, because you're layering the soap and then you're using the hanger swirl and even though you're using the same uh, technique and the same uh, procedure every single time, each soap does look different in the end. So um, this one is always, I'm excited like a little child. Uh, so I'm taking them apart a little bit. You can see here and you're like, mm, is this, is this a butterfly? Is it not? So we need two soaps alongside each other, obviously, to create the lovely butterfly design. Now I couldn't quite get my head around this. I kept make, <laughs> messing it up, as you can see, working out which ones go together. Um, there we go. There is a butterfly of some sort. I did have a couple of really cracking ones. And also I had one, it seemed, that looked a bit like a monkey. Monkey, dragon, the opinions vary on that front. There we go. I'm just trying to get my head around which way around I need to hold these. But there we go. Now, if that's not a nice butterfly or a dragon, then I don't know. And just because they're so cute and so pretty... I'm uh, going to let you see a couple more. Uh, again, apologies for me not actually getting my head around how I need to be holding these. But look at this. I mean, that is lovely. Maybe it's because I'm also a massive fan of these color combinations. Um, but I think the design really worked nicely. Now, as I've pointed out, there is going to be another video. And the reason being that, as I said, these to me are, look at this one. Isn't that a monkey? Is it a monkey or is it not? I think it's a monkey face. Anyway, these designs are really, really pretty, but I wanted to have a slightly different butterfly look. So I am going to upload that because I did have a go at this and I'm really excited about the outcome. So do check back in in a few days. Obviously, if you do have any questions, or any comments, do leave them behind. And otherwise, thank you very much for watching and uh, good luck with your butterflies.